Let me show you what's going on here. What we're looking for is what is the straight line distance between Kevin and Nancy? Everyone, before I even begin, from that one sentence alone, and I'm going to highlight it again, what is the straight line distance between Kevin and Nancy? Is it fair to say that if Kevin's here and Nancy's here, we're just looking for the straight line distance between them? Is that fair? Cool. And again, if you're not, if you're still in the math basics and you're still in this class, hey man, more power to you. Remember, it's going to be a learning curve until you finish the math basics. So you're good. Keep pushing forward. If you feel like you're better served, just continuing with your time in the math basics until you get to this. Sure, man. Go ahead. I recommend that. That's what the plan is. But here we go. If we have Kevin and Nancy, we're just saying, hey, man, if we have Kevin and we have Nancy, I just want to know how far apart they are from Kevin to Nancy. That's all I want to know. Let's figure this out. So let's see what it says. It says Kevin is 24 feet south and seven feet west of Nancy. So let's go ahead and do our thing here. And what I mean by that is remembering our bearings. What's north? What's south? What's east? What's west? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this. Okay. So my party people, um, you can go ahead and just write this down. Never eat soggy Something. Oh, whoops. Never, oh, yeah. Never eat soggy waffles. I'm trying to think about it in the best way that you guys can take it. I think my girlfriend said that. Never eat soggy waffles is what she uses to write her compass down. I just know in north, south, east, west. I already know it. But if that helps you out, never eat soggy waffles. I mean, sure. More power to you. So there you have it. And I want to help us understand and make sense of the, the terminology used here, the words used here. And last bad part of people, just like this free video that you're watching, I have more free materials for you and there's no excuse for you not to get them. I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every single mistake. And on top of that, I have a free class on Zoom once a week, every single week for two hours. So imagine that. You got more free materials than just this YouTube video right over here. Let's keep pushing forward. Sign up right now and I'll see you in the next class. Let's get started. So. Let's say we have Nancy right over here at the top. Let's say we have Nancy. And it says this. So Kevin is 24 feet south and seven feet west from Nancy. So if we're starting at Nancy, here's what's happening, everybody. We got 24 feet south. Right. And then we have seven feet west. And then that means this is where Kevin is. Everyone, is that fair? Is that fair? Nancy starts here. If you go 24 feet south and 7 feet west, you get to Kevin. Is that fair? Perfect. And so with that said, with that said, we are looking for, again, the straight line distance. We're not looking to add the 24 and the 7. No, we are not looking for that. We are looking for not from here to here to there. No, it's here to here. The direct straight line distance, this is what we care about. That right there. And then Santiago asks, is this a triangle? Everybody, it's not just a triangle. What kind of triangle is this? What kind of triangle is this? Because if we go directly south and then west, or west for you guys, since you're looking at me this way. If we go directly south, then west, that's a right angle. And that makes this a right triangle. That makes this a right triangle. So again, even if you're not quite here yet at this specific part of the program, don't worry, because I'm going to show you the one piece of information that will take you from where you are to what you want to be successful in this problem. And that's going to be this. Let me go ahead. Are you guys cool if I make this a little smaller? The compass? Cool. Get you over there, little buddy. Cool. And so here's the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is A squared 
plus b squared equals c squared. Who recognizes that? Who recognizes that? Yeah, absolutely. Should definitely recognize that. And so all we got to do now is just plug in those numbers and we're good. We just know, uh, are the 24 and the 7, are they A and B, A and C, B and C? Which numbers are those? The 24 and the 7, what do we consider those from the formula? Yeah, A and B. A and B. The C is, or for you guys, the C is going to be the straight line distance on the triangle. So basically the longest side, the straight line distance, boom, right here. This is C. That is C. Yeah, Jocelyn, that is the hypotenuse. Yep, that is absolutely the hypotenuse. You can definitely write it that way too. You can definitely write that down too. Absolutely. Yes, the side opposite of the right angle. That is always the hypotenuse. The side that represents the right angle, that is the hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. Always. Always, always, always. So here we go. All we have to do is plug things in. We got 7 squared plus 24 squared is going to equal C squared. Is anybody here intimidated by the math that we're about to do? No? Yes? Had flashback 20 years to school? <laughs> Having flashbacks of Vietnam right here. Like, oh, my God. All right, here we go. 7 squared. Everybody hit me. What's 7 squared? 49, right? What does squared mean again? As a reminder, squared means take that number, multiply it by itself. Seven squared, that's seven times seven. That's how we get 49. Then 24 squared. That means 24 by 24. Everybody here should know that at the top of their head. I expect you to know that when you're born. Come on. I'm kidding. Let's go ahead and do that on the side. Let's make sure we don't mess up. So here we'll go ahead and do 24 times 24. So here we go, four times four, that's gonna be 16. Two times four, that'll be eight. Carry the one, that's nine. Bring down the zero for the tenths place here. Then we'll go ahead and do four times two, that's eight. Two times two, that's four. Add these together, six plus zero. Nine plus eight, that'll be 17. And then that'll be five. So we have 576. So a little bit of math, but still good, still good. So we have 576 equals C squared. All right, what's 49 plus 576, everybody? Again, there's just a ton of calculation to do, but the formula is straight up. The formula is absolutely straight up. 576 plus 49. Nine plus six is gonna be 15. Seven plus four, that'll be 11. Carry the one is 12. And then we have a six right there, 625. 625 equals C squared. So here's the neat part of this problem. The neat part is this. 625 is not the answer. The answer is what times itself will give you 625. Does that make sense to you, yes or no? Again. 625 equals C squared. What that means is some number times itself is going to give you 625. Does that make sense? And again, we got the 49 because 7 squared, 7 times 7. Okay. So for those of you asking, man, coach, how are we in God's name supposed to figure out what C is? How am I supposed to take the square root? of 625. You don't. Because you know that you're multiplying the same number of times itself, you just have to ask yourself, the first digit, what number of times itself ends in a five? Let me go over here. My part of you, let's just take a look at these. And so making it this far in this video, I'm going to go ahead and say it's safe to assume that you like the way I teach. And that's the truth for a lot of folks here. So if you want to learn more about my program, where you can get all of my practice questions, including 15,000 that will help you succeed with step-by-step -step solutions, a lot of them having video solutions, then go ahead and reach out to me. My phone number is 567-698-8867.
go ahead and reach out to me. That way you're not stuck in the same loop that so many people are stuck in with retaking the ASVAB over and over again when the solution to getting a higher score is right here in front of your face. Again, go ahead and text me, ask me about my full program, or click the link in the description to learn more about it. But at the end of the day, sign up, get the score you want, and that job you deserve. Everybody, four, 24, four times four, what does that end in? What does four times four end in? Yeah, four times four is 16, so it ends in a six. Is this our answer? Is this our answer? No! This is how you use your knowledge of numbers. Instead of guessing, going 24 times 24 to see if that might be there, no, not even necessary. Can't be it because four times four ends in six, 16. Nope, not going to be it. 23, three times three. What does that end in? Ends in nine. Everybody, it's supposed to be 625. Is 23 the answer? Not going to be the answer. Let's try 25. 5 times 5 ends in what? Ends in 5 because of 25. This might be the answer. This might work. I'll, I'll just highlight it because if I have another answer that's the same thing that ends in a 5, I'm screwed because i got to do the math then. But 22. 2 times 2. What does that end in? 4. Is that our answer? No. So without actually doing the guess and check math, without actually putting ourselves through an extra bit of hell, we can actually tell what the correct answer is by just eyeballing it, knowing how math works. The last number is going to be four times four, three times three, five times five, two times two. It's going to be the ending digit times itself. And we found, boom, 25 is it. Yes or no, everybody, does that make sense? Absolutely, Landa. That's what I was going to touch on next. So here's another thing that I was going to touch on, my party people. What is a fact about the hypotenuse, the C in a right triangle? What is a fact that is always true about the hypotenuse? Santiago, it's always the longer side. If you knew that, you didn't have to do any of this at all. Let me tell you why. We have 24 and we have seven. If this is guaranteed to be the longest side, it's guaranteed to be bigger than 24. Is that correct? Again, because the hypotenuse is always the longest side, it's guaranteed to be longer than 24. Is that true? Is that true? Is it guaranteed to be longer? Absolutely. Absolutely guaranteed. And because of that, What's the only answer bigger than 24 here? C, 25, done. I'm telling you, you, you guys wouldn't expect it, but it happens way more often than you think. I, I've taken some of these podcasts. I haven't taken the official test because I don't want to get sued, but I've taken the podcast plenty of times to understand that a lot of these answer choices are framed in a way that will let you see a faster way to do the problem if you see what's going on. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there. And you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you want to raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.